Once, there was a girl named Paulette who believed that everyone had a story to tell. Paulette was born in 1948 and did a lot of her growing up in St. Louis, Missouri. She loved reading and writing, but school was very hard for her because she got bullied a lot. See, Paulette was one of the only black kids in an all-white school. Schools in America had been segregated for a long time, which meant that black and white children were separated and treated very differently. Even though things were changing in the 1950s, Paulette did not feel welcome at her school. Even her teachers made her feel like an outsider. Paulette did her best to ignore all the hurtful words. She clutched her books and held her head high as she walked through the hallways. She waited eagerly for the bell to ring, marking the end of the school day, when she could go home and be with the people who truly loved and taught her the most. Home was a magical place for Paulette, filled with books, music and art. In those days, it was dangerous for people of color to travel in certain parts of America. So Paulette's parents opened their home to everyone, making a safe space where some of the most daring and creative black artists, activists and intellectuals came to share their ideas and sometimes even spend the night. Paulette stayed up late, listening to famous musicians and poets chatting in her living room. She peeked through the banister to watch them laughing and clinking glasses. Sometimes they pulled out instruments and launched into the most incredible jazz and pop songs. Paulette couldn't help herself. The music tingled in her skin, making her feel so alive. She needed to get up and dance and sing too. The grown-ups saw how moved she was and they let her join in on the party. It was here in her living room where Paulette learned that art could empower her and connect her to all the people like her, all the people whose stories needed to be told. It took her a few years to figure out what she wanted to say. But when Paulette was a teenager, she picked up a pen and started writing. She wrote about what it felt like to walk down those hallways in grade school and feel the other children's stares stinging her skin. She wrote about the rhythms and melodies that coursed through her veins and the electricity of being in the same room as some of her all-time artistic heroes. She wrote stories, poems, slips of songs, and memories that were so bright she could almost taste them. She described feelings and fantasies and the colors of the rainbow as if she lived inside them. Paulette was an amazing writer, that was for sure. She soon got published in the school magazine, but a lot of people who read her words criticized her for writing about her experiences as a black girl. She was very honest and open about the prejudices she faced and the loneliness of feeling like an outsider. She made her readers think about the black experience in America and all the ways black people were treated unfairly. One teacher picked up some of Paulette's writing and threw it on her desk, telling her to just move on. Paulette was very hurt. She actually stopped writing for a while after that because she felt so discouraged. But she never stopped reading, watching or listening to the world around her. 
It was the 1960s and there was so much changing in America. Paulette knew she wanted to be a part of that change. She just had to figure out how. When Paulette was in her early 20s, she started listening and paying close attention to the conversations she overheard on the street. She loved the way two people could say the same thing and sound completely different. She loved all the accents she heard, the click of heels as they hit the pavement, and the rise of someone's voice as they asked a question. It felt like a whole new kind of music to her, and she missed making music like she'd done in her living room as a kid. Paulette also missed dancing and movement. She wanted to create art that moved. So she went home and reflected on all the snippets of conversations she'd heard in the world around her and started playing with them. She jotted down ideas for characters who might say these words in a play. She imagined the characters swirling and dancing around the stage, sometimes even talking over each other. So it wasn't about the words anymore. It was about the sound and movement of all their voices coming together and forming something completely new. It was around this time that Paulette decided she wanted to feel completely new too. She was learning so much about herself and the art she wanted to make. As she felt herself growing and evolving into the person she wanted to be, she realized the name Paulette felt like it belonged to someone else. Maybe a little girl who was told to move on and stopped writing. Paulette was done being that quiet little girl. She was ready to take control of her own voice and identity. So she gave herself a fresh, fierce name from the Zulu heritage. From now on, Paulette would be known as Ntozake Shange. Ntozake meaning she who comes with her own things. And Shange, which means she who walks like a lion. Ntozake moved to Oakland, California and found a group of artists who loved experimenting with different kinds of performance and writing. She started reading aloud some of the pieces she'd written, adding in live music and dancing. The people who watched her loved what she was doing and wanted more. Then one morning, Ntozake was driving along Highway 1, zipping along a stretch of road with the mountains rising up on one side and the deep blue of the Pacific Ocean on the other. And there, up ahead, she saw a double rainbow arching above. It was so spectacular, each of the colors creating its own bright path through the sky. Ntozake felt like that rainbow was a sign. It was connecting her to the past and the future. The sun, moon, and stars. It was telling her to celebrate all the colors that were possible, not only in the rainbow, but also inside every person's story. In June of 1976, Ntozake stood in a dim blue light on the New York Public Theatre stage. She was wearing a long orange dress that flowed down her bare legs. She had no shoes on as she recited her first line and then danced around the stage with six other women. It was the most incredible night of Ntozake's life so far, the opening of her show, Four Colored Girls. She called it a choreo poem because it was part choreographed dance 
part poetry, part live music, and so much more. Each woman on stage was dressed in a different color of the rainbow and told a different story about being a black woman in America. They also came together at different points to sing and dance in unison. The audience was stunned. They laughed and cried and jumped to their feet, cheering when the lights went out. The show became so popular that it moved to Broadway, where it played to packed houses for two more years. It won the Tony Awards for Best Actress in a Featured Play and was nominated for Best Play in 1977. The play went on to also win the prestigious Obie Award and so many more. It ran for over 740 performances all over the globe and was later turned into a movie for both TV and the box office. As for Ntozake, she became very famous. She became known as the second African-American woman to ever have a show on Broadway and the first artist to be creating something so unique and personal on stage. After performing her show on Broadway, Ntozake decided she needed to step out of the spotlight of the stage so she could start writing again. She had so many ideas swirling through her mind and so much momentum. She felt like there were songs waiting to be sung, words waiting to be written. She had to speak up for all women and all voices that were being oppressed. She needed to keep writing and experimenting so nobody's story went untold. Ntozake spent the rest of her life telling stories, both on stage and off. She opened up so many worlds with her poetry, novels, essays, screenplays, and children's books. She saw art in everything, and everything in art. Even the words she wrote were spaced or spelled differently, because she liked to imagine each letter being able to dance across the page. As she traveled the world, Ntozake carried the energy she felt in her childhood living room with her. The laughter and clinking glasses, the sound of a note that had never been sung before. These inspired her to reach out and connect to people near and far. Through her work, she became a well-known activist who fought for equal rights especially for women and people of color. Art was her rebellion, and she found a whole new way to be a rebel girl, with her voice, her vision, and her belief in everyone's story. This podcast is a production of Rebel Girls. It's based on the book series Goodnight Stories for Rebel Girls. This story was produced by Olivia Richard with sound design and mixing by Bianca Salinas. It was written by Abby Scher. Fact-checking by Joe Radigan. Narration by Lumai DeSmith. Thank you to the whole Rebel Girls team who make this podcast possible. Stay Rebel.